Sandy, Sandy, Sandy. Go ahead, Sandy. Who's left? You know your employees are going to retire six months, even three months before. Don't start looking for a replacement. I have a carrier who retired at the end of last year. I have yet to see the same person deliver my mail. Well, um, retirement is not um, something that they plan or let us know in advance. Sometimes we get notification of a person retiring. Sometimes it's close to a week or two before they retire. Well, we it's up to the individual. Year. It's up to the individual. When they decide they want to go, it's when they go. They put their papers in and that's it. All right, thank you. Heard it? We're going to get there, all right? You've been toasted enough. No, I just want to know. My post office, they run out of the And also, in mean with, I know there's a post office here. Attitude towards the public. Those people behind me there. They're not treating me as public. Some of them, some are very good, and some are very bad in behavior towards the public. I like to know how often you are doing service and then tell them how to do your customer here. Because when you get a restaurant, you want to have customer come there, so you need to treat them. But and I don't believe that with post office. The way they treat me one day is not, it's not nice. So I've never been a customer here. And how often do you do service? Well, um, we put an initiative in place where every morning a supervisor is supposed to have a huddle with the clerks before they get on the window, reminding of the gist that the, um, you know, uh, the courtesy to the customer, good morning, how are you doing? Smiling, is there anything left uh, all the other stuff that they ask for uh, ask the customer regarding their item? But the supervisor in the morning before they log onto the window, they're supposed to have that huddle with them to reinforce the courtesy every morning. Uh, we also have another initiative called a mystery shopper. We have a program where we have mystery shoppers, which we don't know who they are, and they come randomly and visit the post office. They rate how long they wait on line. The wait time in line is supposed to be the goal, five minutes or less. And I know sometimes that's not the case. I know, I know sometimes that's not the case in certain post offices, but that is the goal. So um, we also have um, these mystery shoppers. They rate us on courtesy, knowledge of products, um, cleanliness of the lobby, um, a lot of different things. So not only are we internally reminding the clerks of that they must be courteous and give the great customer service to the, to the public as we expect them to. We also have external people coming in doing random checks, mystery shots on us as well. And they're done sometimes once or twice a month. Okay, uh, okay. At the end of every transaction, we Clerk is supposed to circle the machine uh, and tell you that there is a survey to rate up, to rate their service. So if you look, you can do it. Um, you can scan it with your phone, or you can call the number that's on there, and you can rate the clerk service. The clerk is supposed to let you know and say at the end of each transaction, can you please take the survey and rate my service and how how did I serve you for the day? We really de depend on those surveys. The customer insight because we want to get the insight from you we want the feedback from the customer so that we can address it to that down to that location and we can actually get it down to that actual clerk so without you answering those surveys that's how we can get our feedback and we can address it to make it a better place for you so I would encourage you anytime you go to the post office at the bottom of your receipt there's a survey please do the survey and you can do it online or on the phone and it will help us to help you and give you better service. All right. Listen, that, excuse me. You know, that survey, is it available to the public, uh, to the community it's, board? Um, it's In other a, words, your survey that you you get, 1469 gets ran, rated, right? That survey for that post office, is it available to the public? It's, it's going to be at the bottom of every receipt. No, no, no. The, the results, the results. Oh, the results of the survey, yes. Um, we have a postal forum. And you can come, we usually, and they are invited, major mailers come to the postal forum or people from the general public come to the postal community forums, the PCC meetings, and then that's where we share our results of surveys and our service and um, timeliness of service and so on. Right. Could, could the, no, the community board be notified when these forums you know, take place? I will reach out to, um, Jeremy I will reach out to customer relations 
and I'll tell them to send you invites whenever we have them. All right. Yeah. Okay. Not the third Thursday, because that's our meeting. No, you were the fourth <laughs> Thursday. All right, and, and just to recap. Tony. Uh, years ago, many years ago, you had the regular, and you had a steady fill-in for a couple of hours. Uh, uh, the floater, are you reinstituting that procedure? Because that would probably cut back a lot of the complaints. We have that in place. You do? That never stops. The issue is the employee availability. When you have the regular who's out, and then the floater calls out sick, and the floater is out, so now you have to fill it in with an unfamiliar character. But that's one. Or thing. they take the route and they broke, break it up into pieces, and everyone takes a piece. Well, I, I, yeah, I know where you give the regular does the regular round, and he has to do another half a round because you don't have enough people. I understand right. that. Yeah. Now, my next thing is, I'm going to tell you, the lines. I mean, I laughed about the lines, and don't get mad. I'm in 10469, and every time I go in there, I know I have seen you. I have seen you have another girl. However, I have seen at uh, nine o'clock, and sometimes I get there a couple of minutes before nine, nine o'clock, there's a big line and there's only one person. Mm -hmm. and, and it's very consistent in 104.69. Yes. I have an employment availability issue right now with my clerk. Um, I have several that are out sick. I have open uh, bids. So I have. Um, very limited staffing right now. Okay. That's why I'm in my lobby a lot because, yeah, but we're working on it. You're so, working on it, that's all. So I'll, I'll take you at your word. But I have yeah. my one clerk in the lobby and the one, one, okay. one in the middle and the one in the lobby. A lot of times, as you say, as you're stating, I'm out there because I'm, I'm also doing transactions to help them. Okay. All right, listen, you, you heard the gripes. Yes. You know, you go, you go back, you talk about it. Hopefully there's some improvement. Maybe in six months we'll have you back, and, and, and probably a lot more friendly. Uh, <laughs> air, you know. I still feel it was a friendly environment. All right. No, it, it, really. No, really. Try to address it. This is the third, third time we had the postal people here. It's and I'm going back years now. I'm not just saying now six months. Years. It, it's it's an ongoing problem, and we would like to see it solved. Please. We've had some fresh new faces here. So I, I see that. I, or I see in the morning. She's like the Gestapo out there. <laughs> but anyway, let's see improvement, okay? Thank All right. You. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, have a good day. Bye bye. <laughs> and I saw him last night. I says, uh, Is somebody coming to our meeting? He says, Yeah, me. And he's a man of his word. I mean, this is about the very fourth time we see him there. So I give you the captain, he'll give you a recap of what's happening here. Thank you. I'll be quick. Um, so, uh, I'm having a little uh, difficult start to the year 2018. We're up in crime 13.3%. Uh, We're up uh, 21 additional crimes uh, year to date. We're up uh, two uh, homicides year to date versus zero last year. We're up three, um, two rapes, three versus one. Wow. We're up 13 robberies. 43 versus 30. We're flat in felony assaults, 30 versus 35. We're, up, uh, we're, we're down significantly in burglaries, 16 versus 28. Uh, we're up in grand larcenies, 65 versus 59. That's an additional six. And we're up in grand larceny autos, uh, 15 versus five. That's an additional 10. We had a great beginning of 2017. Um, the command averages about 24 index crimes a week. Um, at this time last year, we were coming in with 16s and 17s. I mean, we were feeling really tremendous. This year is a different story. Uh, we had two homicides uh, year to date. Uh, the one at 1932 Hone Avenue, on, uh, February 5th. That was the morning after the Super Bowl. We got a uh, call at 1932 Hone. Discovered a male shot in his uh, in his vehicle multiple times. Um, our investigation leads us to a family member. Subsequently, uh, made an arrest. It was a, a dispute that spilled over from the uh, night before Super Bowl night into that morning. And, uh, a family member of the deceased uh, uh, shot him multiple times, killing him. We have made an arrest. Two arrests on that way. Uh, so tragic. Concerning, yes, um, 
threat to the community at the time the incident happened, yes, no longer arrests have been made. It, it's not like it was a uh, gang or a narcotics related incident. So uh, solved uh, successfully. Uh, the other shooting we had uh, for a year was up in East Chester Houses, uh, 1245 a D. That was uh, non fatally shot in his leg on uh, January 23rd. Uh, 0949 hours. Within seven hours, uh, between our detectives and our, and our intelligence officers, we gained information on who the individual was. And then seven hours later, we had him arrested uh, in the adjacent building in the Eastchester houses. Uh, and then our other homicide for the year was a standing uh, homicide at 2300 uh, Bronx Park. This was an individual that uh, uh, worked at a restaurant on Morris Park Avenue. Uh, he was turning home to his residence at 2300 Bronze Park East, and he was assaulted, stabbed one time, uh, fatally in the, uh, in the heart, and he died in the vestibule of uh, 2300 Bronze Park East. We recovered video in the area. Uh, we have some individuals um, on surveillance that we need to identify and uh, speak with. Um, we have some investigative leads that I don't want to go into. Very concerning uh, 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 form. Uh, that happened on the 15th uh, at 2150 hours. So you're going to see a lot more police presence. Uh, the borough has been kind. They've uh, had additional resources allocated to the 49 precinct. Um, Specifically, I have them uh, Bronx Park East, Boston Road, Waring to Pelham Parkway North in regards to this. Um, I also have them deployed in other areas that are historically we've seen violence around Pelham House. That's why I have them up in East Chester as well. Um, so it's all hands on deck right now because we are experiencing an uptick in, 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 in crime. Um, I know one of the other instances that Brought me the attention, very concerning. We had a home in 2219 uh, Tenbrook, February 5th. Elderly uh, female comes home, finds a perpetrator inside the, uh, her residence up on the second floor. He assaults her with a crowbar and is used to gain entry. We also got video on that. The NCO officers are really canvassing hard and, uh, and uh, came up with some video on the subject. We need to identify that individual. Um, I know there was concern. If we've experienced four of these type of home invasions slash interrupted verbs in the command year to date. Uh, we had one at 1310 and D. We had another one at 1732 Colden, right across from the community board uh, office. We had this one at 2219 Pembroke. And then we had one up at uh, the Paradise Hotel. So what happens is the Bronx looks at the 49 and they say the 49 has four. The 4 4 had three. They, they brought us in for a meeting at, at the borough and we discussed all our home invasions to see if there was a link. And we're not seeing any links to any of these home invasions. 2219, uh, Pembroke was one perpetrator. 1732 was two perpetrators. 1310 and D was two perpetrators. Totally different description. Uh, we feel as if they uh, hit the wrong house on that one and then hit the adjacent house. That adjacent house, we spoke to that resident. That resident just gives us a lead on two individuals. He's had a just be joke. We're looking at them as possible. And then uh, the 2990 Boston Road with the Paradise Hotel, we identified uh, three perpetrators, two or one, and one we have arrested already on that. Uh, there was another um, deception bird that was very concerning that I wanted the community to be aware of. Um, it was a type of bird that I guess the 49 had experienced back in the day prior to um, my arrival. Uh, it was a pattern. Uh, it was a, we call it a deception bird because the perpetrators posed as water work uh, or water employees uh, where they were, they con their way in, they target the elderly, they con their way into the residence, say they um, for a water company, they need to test the water, and uh, the elderly let them in. And basically distracts them, tells them to turn on the water, turn off the water while they're ransacking the, the house and taking the um, currency in this case. Um, our um, organized uh, 
crime or organized theft ring specializes in these type of deception works. They have the lead on it. They did a video canvas. They identified a vehicle. They have a, a suspects a person's interest at this time. So I, I like the way that one's going. Um, other, other concerns that are going on in the command, again, like last year, the tires and rims still the same. We're targeting the um, 2017 brand new Honda Accords for the tires and rims. 1680, Palm Parkway South, 1507, Bronxdale. I want to say we have about four year to date. Um, Cadillac converters are seem to be uh, uh, stepping up where an individual basically what they do is they pull alongside the uh looking at these like the tunnel line vans or or trucks like you hold trucks they like them to the pull alongside of them they'll go underneath them they'll have a uh, uh like a sawzall that's uh, battery powered they'll cut the uh catalytic converters out really quick and then they jump back in the vehicle when they leave um and then they sell for scrap metal uh it's, it's Work, it has a lot of value to it, so it's a quick steal. Um, these type of crimes, tires and rims, mailbox suspicion, we have four year to date versus seven last year, so we have less mailbox suspicion than last year, which I like that trend, and I want to see it going down. Um, mailbox suspicion, tires and rims, really, you guys are going to be the, uh, uh, the difference makers. If you guys see them, you can alert us. It's, you know, nine times out of ten, uh, ten, you know, we're circling around and if we get lucky, we get it. But the majority of our rest last year was off the community uh, uh, coming forward and providing us that information. Uh, the other significant in incidents uh, year to date was the bank robbery, 2918 White Plains Road, Bank of America. Uh, it was a great collaborative effort with uh, 49 PDU, our detective squad, our joint bank robbery task force. Our NCO officers within seconds getting on the film, the, the 49 uh, detective squad knew exactly who the guy was. NCOs uh, go out to a camera campus, they, uh, they find a witness who actually provides video of the individual after he robs the bank and stole about seven or eight thousand dollars with it armed with a crossbow. And we retrieved the video, and then our intel officers and our SRG that came into the camp apprehended them uh, with all brand new clothes and uh, shop. But uh, he was charged federally and brought down. Uh, he, was, he was problematic. He was uh, a shooter in 2013 in townhouses. Now he's uh, federally incarcerated. Uh, you know, I, that was a big win for the community. Um, Housing is uh, doing good uh, year to date. Nine versus twelve, we're down uh, uh, three crimes in housing. Transit is doing good. Four versus six, we're down two crimes in, in, uh, in transit. Um, and then the last significant incident, which I'm sure you saw in the news, was the uh, the uh, terrorism investigation at 2121 Matthews. Uh, I was alerted uh, through the intelligence bureau. Uh, the FBI that there was going to be uh, a search warrant at the location. Um, they, I you know a lot of it's in the media and press release. Um, they execute the search warrant. They find uh, quite a bit of material if combined with uh, with uh, build, uh, a bomb, explosive device. Um, it's a this investigation. A boom. Not a four-night uh, precinct investigation. This is a joint intelligence bureau FBI federal investigation. Um, started in 2017, December 2017. Started off with threats at a school, which led to the identified person of the person who made the threats. They arrest that person. They speak to that person further. It learned it leads into a sex crime. Uh, um, which that person was arrested, and then what happens after that when they look into it a little bit further and they talk to the victim of the sex crime, they learn about this explosive uh, material in the residence. They enter the residence. Mm -hmm. um, at no time was anyone at risk. Uh, the material was uh, not combined, so it wasn't a threat. Um, it was, I want to say it was 30 pounds total. Um, they had some ammunition as well. Uh, two individuals were arrested. They were brothers, 27 years of age. Um, 
I don't have any details as far as uh, whether they're labeled as domestic or foreign uh, terrorism. I couldn't go into that. That would be uh, uh, my investigation. Um, but I think it was, you know, a well done job by the intelligence bureau, uh, the home run. Um, so. Those two individuals were brought down to 26 Federal Plaza. There was also another individual that lived or resided at the location. The mother, the mother was not arrested. She still resides or stays in that location. Um, I gotta go back. And outside of that, that's uh, here to be. I gotta say, this last night I went to visit the four night precinct at six, at six o'clock. Um, I looked in the cells. They were filled up. They were filled up, and the squad that the death cells filled up. And I, I was awed. I was awed. These guys are going out and making an arrest out there. And I'm very proud of them. And with the, 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 the tremendous board I'm preaching, I'm not concerned with this because I know the people we have are very good and they have the proper leadership that this man will correct the situation. We'll, by the time he comes back, he's going to be back like the old days, low on crime. I have total confidence in him and the members of the whole oh, yeah. He's out. Any question? Yes. I agree. On the weekends, do you know that they're doing track work on the two and five in Huntley District? So there's no trains going uptown past there. Um, we're getting people into the neighborhoods. They're walking around, they're lost. Even though the buses are outside, they're taking further. And we've been having a bit of a problem. Maybe you could let your, your uh, community police know, because the weekends is, is, the, is when they show up. And when you venture to ask somebody, oh, well, I'm trying to get to Dunhill uh, Road or whatever, they go back and get on the bus. You know, the bus will take you the rest of the way. You're saying people are just uh, transversing through uh, Venice, right. the lower walking through the, through the block, and you're concerned. And the and the Venice, the Venice, the they're just traversing through, they, they're lost. The, yeah. Even though the buses are there, a lot of people will get on the buses, they know that the bus will take them the rest of the train route from 180th Street up to Dyer or whatever, but somehow. So, unfortunately, my two last two months, just uh, got caught up with something that uh, uh, but uh, I'll give them that information. I'm sure you, you have they made contact with you. you. You can communicate directly with them. Any concerns? So, uh, you know, we went to the NCO program January 22nd. Man is divided up into three uh, uh, sectors or areas of concern. Van Ness, Morris Park is basically Sector Adam, uh, uh, Helm Parkway South, um, Bronx Park East. Say Williams Bridge, Palm House area, that's going to be Sector Boy, and then Allenton, Eastchester, and, and Palm Gardens is going to be Sector Charlie. And, the and we have our housing NCOs and communicate directly with them. Any information you have, you have via email, uh, text, uh, it's you know, a great way to provide intelligence, any information you want to give confidentially, any. Uh, um, minor issues that you would like to see addressed uh, personally. Um, any emergencies got to be done through 911. These officers are going to be holding their own uh, community uh, uh, meetings or bill of block meetings on a quarterly basis. So you get to know them personally. It's, uh, it's a great way of forming a relationship with the, with the 49 precinct if you don't have a strong one already. Um, and you know, you'll get to know your officer on that command. And now these officers, don't bounce around the command. They strictly stick to one area, that's their designated area. I have to monitor that to make sure they're not going out other, uh, in uh, other areas. And the purpose behind that is to get to know the community, get to know what's not right, what's out of the ordinary, and uh, uh, form a better relationship between the police and the community. So it's a, it's a, it's a good thing. Um, um, it's going well. Captain, thank you very much. All right, so we'll move on to the gallery. Um, so our acting sergeant arms tonight is Dustin, and she's going to do the timekeeper as well as the gavel. And so the number of gallery session speakers will get a 30 second mark for the elected reps, and she'll hold their 30 second um, 
the Coast Guard, so just watch her for your time, and you know, let me do two minutes and a half tonight, all right? So, starting with the gallery, we will call Patricia sure. Francis regarding the Holland Avenue construction. Good evening, Tony. We have a, a situation with the construction that came to our attention that needs the attention of uh, land use, DOT, and uh, safety. So Holland Avenue has been constantly in construction. I think that over the past decade, it's been dug up about four or five times now. So the mm -hmm. foreman and I were speaking uh, over lunch yesterday, and he was talking about a gas line that runs all the way to, uh, to Westchester, even, even beyond, but that's where the cutoff valve is. And it runs right underneath Holland Avenue, and he was telling us that in three years, that's gonna need to be repaired. And if not, the, um, the explosion that this could cause, if it wasn't, is, uh, is severe. So if we can look into that, because it's twofold. One, it's a hazard to the, to the residents if it's not repaired. I um, have no doubt that if it comes to, uh, to that extent, it'll get repaired. But that means in three years, Holland Avenue is gonna get dug up all again. over again. And he's mm. saying they don't have the funding to, uh, to do the repair now. Also, we need to get Con Edison uh, on board with DDC because they're holding up their work and it's holding up traffic, so they need to get onto the to the same page. Thanks. Green, you were talking to an employee or DDC, the, uh, the, the contractor. He was saying that there's a, a gas pipe right next because you know they're replacing the sewer. Yeah, yeah. So right along that, it, it seems like it's the uh, the main route for several of these pipes. So to the left is uh, on the uh, on the east side is uh, that's a question. Where is it? The east side is the gas line, and oh, he's saying that it. in three years that's going to need to be repaired. All right, we'll follow up. All right. Thank you. So, uh, Lisa, Mike, please. On the phone. His name is Dario, by the way. What block of Holland Avenue? Uh, all of it, but he's specifically talking about uh, Allerton and Mace, across the road, where it intersects. Okay, great. Thank you, Gene. Uh, Natalia Fernandez, regarding uh, election. I don't know. Good evening. Um, I'm Natalia Fernandez. I just wanted to inform that there's a special election on April 24th of the uh, this year due to the vacancy. And also to let you know that I'm no longer the governor's representative. So one that new representative is announced, I'll make sure that I can support the bill. Thank you very much. Uh, that is for the New York State, Mark Jonasi, uh, New York State Assembly. Uh, Carol Bailey, dog mess on sidewalks. Good evening, everybody. My name is Carol Bailey. I'm one of the nurses at Monte Pio Medical Center, I'm at 2959 Barnes Avenue. And it's been, it's a big problem in that area with the dog poop. I, uh, many times, the school is located approximately one block from where I live. The other day I was home, a child uh, was sitting on my stoop. Did not want to go to school because he has problem getting poop off his shoe. And um, he didn't want to smell in school. It's a bad problem. And, uh, it seems, it seems like there is nobody to help resolve this problem. It's a quality of life, uh, you know, in that neighborhood. And I need to know what the sanitation department can do to assist. Nothing. So they can't do anything. Two nine five ninety barns between Williams Bridge and uh, eighty. And eighty. Mm -hmm. It's very bad. Yes, please. But more importantly, or just as importantly, keep track of patterns. Like if you know particularly it's this big guy with his little white dog, you know, we, we need to know is it 9 a.m. or is it 9 p.m.? So as much as possible, try to write it down, give you a little notebook or something. Okay, I, I can do that. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, you can. 
They they won't. Um, I've gotten to the point where um, I did a couple of interviews on television about this because it's bad. It's that bad. It is bad. I'll have a full of cameras. I don't keep them. Yeah, I'll, I'll start keeping them now. I just did not have faith that anything was going to. Yeah. Now we can just. State the reference numbers, give it to us, call us, email us, whatever, um, and we'll reach out to sanitation. And then I guess uh, the PD vote as well. Uh, final question, Edith Blitzer. Yeah, same question, it's a statement. If you call Nicky Paranova and give him the address, I mean, he's done it for us too. He sends his inspectors over in the morning and tries to catch the people that are walking their dogs without cleaning up. I did find, I did get a sanitation worker was sitting in his car, and I did mention to him what the problem. He says, well, we can't do much about it because uh, if you don't get the name and the address, there isn't much that you can do, and the only person who can get that information from the, the dog walker is NYPD, that they don't have the ability to track that's a not true. Person, uh, with your dog, I guess the person volunteer their information. That's not true. That's a lie. Yeah, the, the issue of sanitation is they, they ask for ID and they don't have to provide it. That's, that's true. They don't have it to provide it to the police either. So, so thank you. Uh, Larry from the Alton Merchants Association. Okay. Uh, thanks for the time. I want to make a quick announcement. A couple of quick announcements, as you may or may not know. Gene DeFrancis has stepped down as the director of the Burns so Association. The new director sitting there. We had our last meeting, election for the officers. Lauren Chambry is now the president. I'm the vice president. Uh, Christine Wild is the sergeant arms, and Veronica is the secretary. And we just want to make uh, you guys aware that we have our fifth annual cocktail party and anniversary cocktail party on Tuesday, May 1st, at the Saints. This year's honoree will be uh, tax man John Serini. And this will be held at the uh, Saints. In the past, we've had Jeremy was, our, was one of our honorees, and Jackie Villarreal with uh, others. Okay, thank you. Um, Mandy Martinez, New York Public Library. Good evening. All right, so I want to report that uh, this fiscal year, one of our main focuses was to enhance our collection. You know, our books, DVDs, any materials that circulate, and I want to report as of right now, year to date, we're up 16% in circulation. So um, we're going to continue doing that. Of course, we have normal programming that's going on for all ages, but I really want to um, I want to bring out Women's History Month Teen Trivia. We're going to be doing that on Friday, March 23rd at 3:30. We're going to be offering incentives and gifts um, to teens in the community. And we're going to be also doing a coffee and canvas for adults on, on Thursday, March 29th at 4.30. Hmm. That one does require registration. We also have early literacy programs that take place on the Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday at 11 a.m. Uh, we've had positive uh, feedback from the community, and we're looking to increase programming. That's it. I just want to say, Captain, I have been working with the NC officers that cover, cover uh, Sector C, Charlie, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, amazing, amazing, amazing work on that side. I see them around too, so great. Any questions? No? Thank you very much, Manny. All right, thank you. And last but not least, Ralph Schweitzer. We're at 2241 White Plains Road. I'll keep it short. Um, my name is Ralph F. Schweitzer. I'm head of the Bronx Park East Community Association. We advocate for the Allerton and Paul Property Road sections of the community board. Wanted to go on record about 2241 White Plains Road is a proposed six-story building, five of which would be apartment buildings. 
Um, I'm not a driver, as you know, but the parking situation in our neighborhood is already hard. Um, people searching for hours to find parking, sometimes they'll sleep in a car. This new building has no parking arrangements. Um, neighborhoods are already overcrowded and under service, so you know, we can't stop a building, but we're gonna have a building um, for parking. Additionally, um, it will be rent stabilized, however, this isn't really affordable housing. Um, two bedrooms, 1643. Um, three bedrooms, 2146. Um, one bed, um, one, there are some one bedrooms going for 1788. Um, wow. Literally, some of the one bedrooms are 1359. But um, we don't wow. want something just pushed upon us. As I said, um, I grew up in Dwight's Place. This, uh, this is actually at the corner of Dwight's Place and Boston Road, right by Stephen Restaurant. Um, so it, um, the community board. I just want to go on record. Uh, Councilman Torrey's office, Joey Pennis, um, are looking into it. And um, thank you. That's all. Any questions? No, Shannon, Mike? Yeah, I spoke to the gentleman uh, who proposed the building, and not only you're telling me the rents are ridiculous, but the size of the apartments. Oh, ridiculous. The studios, I think he says, are 400 square feet. Wow. One bedroom, 625. Two bedrooms, eight hundred and fifty. What? I mean, they're putting them in matchboxes. Mm -hmm. They spend a lot of money. Mm -hmm. This guy's just looking to rip off the neighborhood, make whatever money he can. Mm -hmm. He's not interested in the people who live there or who he's going to be putting in there. Mm -hmm. And I hope if this thing ever does come up to a vote, that everybody over here votes it down. And I'm going to do my best to get all of the co-ops and condos. Sign a petition, Senator Richard Torres, against this. Thank you. Do you? Also, at the last community board meeting at Cavalry, they yeah. presented this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we didn't like it then, so why like it now? Yeah. Do they need the community board's approval to go forward? No. No, well, if they need money, I believe, if they apply for funds from the state or the city, I think they have to come it's to us. HPD project, is that yeah, no, they're, they're looking for a recommendation. I believe Jazz is going to do an on-site visit. We're supposed to go out tomorrow and see Harlem. Okay, so I'll come back and give you a, a whatever. I'll come back. That's all I can say, okay? Thank you, Jazz. All right, that concludes the gallery session. We'll move on to the elected officials. Uh, from the Borough President's Office, Tom McKinney. Good evening, everyone. Since it's a quarter to nine, I will leave uh, the bulk of the report to uh, for Jeremy just to contribute, uh, which I sent him yesterday. But just two quick items. One is um, I did notice in one of your uh, committee reports you spoke about the uh, tragic fire that occurred in in, uh, in Belmont. I think it was in. Yeah, Hayes uh, committee. Um, and just to let you know, we've been working uh, with Councilmember Torres and Councilmember Deutsch uh, from Brooklyn on a series of uh, pieces of legislation uh, to help prevent these catastrophic fires. We had a press conference last week with the uh, council member, um, and the legislation is, is three parts. One is that it would require owners of buildings with three or more units to provide stove safety devices on all stoves and units where there are children 10 years of age or younger. Um, it would require the fire department to work with the Department of Education to implement a plan for educating children and parents about fire safety. While we know the fire department does do that on request, uh, this would require the fire department to create a schedule for all of the schools in the, in the city. And it also would, the third intro would require landlords to post a notice that those escaping the fire should close the doors behind them. There's also some talk about creating legislation that would require self-closing doors if it, if it doesn't already, uh, if buildings don't already have it. And then lastly, um, Borough President delivered his State of the Borough address today. Um, next month I'll talk a bit more about it. The link is on our website. If you'd like to go to the website, see the um, see the entire address. Uh, it is available on the website. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Uh, moving on, we will go to 
Councilmember Joni's office, Marilyn. Hi, my name is Marilyn Taylor. For those who don't know me, I'm the manager of the Council of Joni. And um, um, I have two announcements. We are, if you guys don't know yet, we moved to a new office, so we're now located at 1478 Williams Bridge Road. And um, if you'd ever like to reach our office, our phone number is 718. 931 1721. Um, we, so we're holding two events. On um, March 7th, we're actually hosting a community safety meeting. Um, I still have yet to send out flyers, but I do have some back of the table over there. Um, one other event that we're having is we're celebrating Coastal of Independence on February 27th down at the Council Chambers in City Hall. Um, it's a little late, but tomorrow's the deadline to RSVP. We still have a lot of seats open. So you can call 212-482-4122 to RSVP. And um, that's what we're talking about. Thank you. Great. Good time. Uh, Council Member Torres' office, Joe McManus. I always have to raise these things. Uh, thank you very much. I uh, hope everybody had a nice holiday. Uh, just, just two things, just quick. Uh, this tax prep, I think Councilman Torres is off because you must make an appointment. And uh, just as what Rafael was telling me about, we are working on that 2241 White Plains Road, trying to get everybody together to see if there can be some accommodations. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Uh, <laughs> uh, Councilmember King's office, Adam Ramirez. Hello, folks. I wanted to promote two events that we're having. We have our uh, State of the District address, which is going to be on March 12th. We have flyers over there. Um, the councilman is also having the second annual um, day in the city where we bring awareness to the three fifths clause in the Constitution. Um, so that's going to be on March 5th. We also have flyers over there. Um, as far as legislation, there's a piece of legislation the councilman introduced like a while ago that we're trying to sort of bring back. Um, for homeowners where there's a tree in front of your house where it does damage to the sidewalk, the city doesn't really have any kind of anything in place to sort of help you out, sort of compensate you. The kind of thing that no one would sort of really care about a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. Patrick. Oh. 
Thank you. And then last but not least, we have um, the office director of the Aid Assembly District. Okay, great. Thank you for coming. So that ends the gallery. We'll move on to chairman's report. Tony. Uh, uh, January minutes. Uh, I'm making a motion to accept the January minutes. Do I have a second? Is, uh, Sandra? Oh, uh, yeah, so a second. All right. Open for discussion. Yes, I sent you the email. I read the, the minutes. There's no notation of any kind that um, there was anything said against the DOT's program. Mm. No, the, I did send out. I did send a reply to Paul, who we heard it at. Um, we we amended that. So. It's on record that Venice Neighbor Alliance is against as well as Morris Park Community Association. Uh, and I ran that by David earlier. It's not either. That's why I missed it. Any other questions, comments, in the minutes? So, all in favor? Aye. Are you against? Linda? Uh, abstentions? So, I'll pass the point again. Okay. Okay. Yeah, uh, she'll be all, be all well tonight. She's not here. But in the focus of the copy of the Treasury Report, it's too much. I move on now for our district manager. All right, so a few things, I'll try to go through them real quickly. So we put out, a while ago we put, last year we put out uh, alternate side suspension, street sign changes, and 